Hello everyone, uh, welcome to 2021. Unfortunately, we're still living in the condition of uh, uh, the COVID-19, but today we are here with uh, our friend Geraldo Antinia. Uh, Geraldo, thank you very much for, for, for coming to our, uh, uh, our talk. And it's a privilege to have a member of Chile, representing Chile today the, for the very first time on our, our channel. And so, first of all, uh, thank you for your time. Welcoming you to the Cyber Talks. I'm sure you can contribute with our kind of a level for education on the Cyber Talks. And it's a privilege to have you with us today. Okay. Hey, Rafael. Uh, first of all, many thanks for your invitation to your program. Um, let me share with you and your audience too a little about some cybersecurity cases in Chile. Maybe these cases are very common in the, re the rest of the world, but they are very emblematic for us. F fantastic, Gerardo. So I, g I have a question here. So what I would like to ask you is how the attacks has affected uh, the extraction of the financial industry in Chile? Okay. Um, Maybe I can resume this set of incidents as examples of two kinds of attacks. The first one is a credential theft and identity spoofing, just in order to steal money. That is the case of Banco de Chile and Banco Consorcio in 2018 and 2019. And the second one is the ransomware with persistence to steal uh, information and ask for ransom. That is the case of Banco Estado in 2020. In summary, we have uh, the case of three banks attacked in three years, in the last three, three years. The Banco de Chile was the first attack with theft of money that was known in the country. The controller entity, that is the entity that regulates financial entities here in the market, was immediately involved. And the issue was even discussed at national government levels. The controller closely followed the entire process from the attack and took no to a stream uh, is audited throughout the market. Also, the citizens criticized the financial industry for its lack of investment in security. Distrust uh, in the banking system didn't cause a loss of clients in important way, since there is a special appreciation because it's the bank that uses the name of the country in its brand and for its closeness to its customers showing empathy. From there, uh, it was considered important to strengthen the audit and banks and generate transparency by publishing new procedures to report incidents in a standard way and in short times too, with hard penalties if these new requirements were met. Additionally, the national cyber security policy was created for, for first time for the country. The CSIRT and a special team, incident response national team, was created with analysis and monitoring of cases. And that is a, an important contribution in support of the cases of subsequent attacks and other two more important banks. The progress uh, was produced to uh, made in a government decrease to implement minimum uh, security requirements in official entities too. And the case was discussed in the parliament too, giving rise to the draft law on computer crimes and protection of personal data, in addition to advertising or advancing also in including banks as a critical infrastructure for the country. Because of that, banking industry began to invest more in security and IT, as well as awareness campaigns for its clients to regain confidence in the country financial system which is uh, amazing uh, to understand how everything combined together and bring, bring I mean have kind of a produce a huge benefit in terms of as you mentioned uh, acts 
in terms of a cybercrime and unify the country uh, for the same purpose of a fighting cybercrime, which is which is amazing to see this uh, example that you 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 just mentioned. The other question is how I mean and how the banks are recovering uh, from the impact. Okay, uh, as a description of the reality right now, the information and study of models operandi of the attack or kill chain is becoming known faster and faster. Collaboration and intelligence are accelerated, but, but the attack occurs anyway. The hacker shows detailed planning and precision and a love of passion to prepare the scene of the attack before executing it. But my conclusion is that they are always reactive actions. There is not enough anticipation capacity. Therefore, it seems reasonable that we have to put more focus on our response capacity and show resilience, also strengthening the recovery phase, and with the lessons learned, improve controls and anticipation based on a true understanding of the risk. And with that incorporated uh, to the board agenda, we can immediately translate this, this into a budget for cybersecurity. Finally, I believe that a company alone cannot cope with attacks and risk situations without support. Collaboration is key, not only with the, within the organization internally, but also externally with suppliers and specialized consultants to industry and of course uh, government entities too. And I said this because everything points to ATP, IPTs, or highly trained organized groups, perhaps from nation governments, who are behind these attacks. And this implies that attackers will have almost unlimited resources to design malware and combination of always innovative attacks and to make proof of concepts with real scenarios like uh, Chile, for example, protected by anonymity and impunity, reaching highly sophisticated results and almost unstoppable. And the designed products might even be offered to the highest bidder in certain types of markets like dark web. This is the scene of cyber war between a too large interest and almost without being able to by, be identified in a naturally complex world. Uh, Geraldo, uh, it is very interesting uh, all the topics that you have uh, sent to us uh, from this uh, talk that we are having. And I can see there's a lot of improvements as well that following what happened is being occurring uh, from, the, from the attack. So, what are they are doing in order to protect from the new attacks, uh, 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 the banks or the, the institutions? What is the kind of incentive for them to do that? Yes, um, as, as, as you know, uh, uh, banks uh, need to be, uh, uh, be uh, inside uh, or act uh, doing their business uh, inside that environment very regulated. That's why uh, they are very uh, aware about uh, their, the, the consequences uh, to be in, not in conditions to operate in that market. That, that's why uh, I can mention you some examples of that, that measures yes, to improve the- Yes, for sure, let's do that. Uh, uh, for example, banks execute uh, awareness campaigns not only to the, their clients and uh, to the staff too. Um, they produce uh, a simplification of operational processes and a very close uh, uh, and exhausted revision of uh, identity access management because of the stolen credential uh, uses in the attacks uh, that I mentioned before. Um, they produce an improvement of internal control model too, by clearly defining the responsibilities of the three lines of defense, business owners, uh, risk management, and audit too. 
according to standards like COSO and Basel. They incorporated the, the CISO to the board of the director too. That is an important point uh, in the in, at level of decisions. And the incorporation of main suppliers in audits in risk assessment too. Uh, we have a case where a main supplier was a, a, a factor to produce the attack. And, and more technical measures, the, they incorporate, are incorporating the threat intelligence uh, using the framework of OSINT, and the creation of the CIRT, as an, I mentioned before, as a special team at national level uh, to respond to incidents. Um, the creation of CISO communities and the incorporation of techniques, the red team and blue team internally at the companies. Um, they are using new products uh, with art artificial intelligence uh, just in order to uh, analyze the user behavior and um, uh, operational uh, process automation too using SOAR. Uh, regarding to the applications, they are incorporating uh, DevSecOps uh, and security by design um, in the development cycle and the pipeline. Um, another example that is that this is more recently, um, they are incorporating the continuous assessment of indicators of compromise. This is a new tendency uh, using specialized, uh, specialized external services, uh, just in order to improve the vulnerability assessments. The, those are some examples of that. Fantastic. No, um, Gerardo, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. I really appreciate our talk. Uh, please feel free to suggest new friends from Chile to contribute with our cyber talks. Uh, I think we are open for those opportunities as well. And, you know, I think I really appreciate for your help today uh, uh, with the cyber talk. Thank you to you, uh, Rafael. Many thanks for, uh, again for this space. And I hope we can bypass this pandemic soon. And meanwhile, all the best and keep safe. See you later. See you later.